So welcome to AI Academy. My name is Loic Sanchez. I'm an outbound PM on the platform AI side. And uh, before we get started, I just always like to mention that we have additional resources for you. There is an AI and intelligence community on the ServiceNow community forum. You can access with an easy link. It's uh, sn.works slash AI. On that forum, you can ask questions. We have experts and other customers and partners uh, joining into uh, answering your questions. We also publish articles and uh, it's uh, becoming quite uh, populated with a lot of articles on the topic of uh, the different AI products. So I, I recommend that uh, you check, check that out uh, whenever you want information. And, and the, the great thing is that it's available all the time. So you don't have to, to wait to get an answer. In addition to that, uh, we have the, those recordings that are posted to the YouTube channel of the Now community. And you can find a previous recording of uh, that set, the, those academies, as well as the other ones, and all the content that's created by the Now community uh, different teams. So very helpful forum. And if you want to get the latest news, you have a YouTube account. You can subscribe to the channel so you get updated whenever there is new content. Um, and for today specifically, I want to mention uh, the Document Intelligence FAQ Forum that was just published recently. So I'm going to put the link in the chat. Uh, it's uh, easily accessible when you go on the community, but just want to mention that uh, because it's pretty, it's, uh, it's fairly new. Uh, we gathered a lot of the questions that we got on the field uh, from, from customers, partners uh, around you know, the frequently asked questions on, on Docintel, and we just compile that into a document that's uh, easy to consume. So you get all the answers for your questions without having to wait for somebody to, to answer you. So I, again, recommend checking that out. An other resource that uh, we want to mention today, uh, the, the AI team just launched a new course on now learning. The course is called, is called Get Started with AI Solutions. Uh, it's aimed at uh, anybody in your company that has to do with AI and service now. So AI process owners, AI admins, um, even just if you want to be an AI champion in your company. And it brings you really all the, the basic uh, understanding of uh, what's AI, how to deploy it, and how to make AI-driven decisions across your company. So it's uh, not... a uh, technical course on how to implement products, but it's a foundational course that's very helpful to, to help you understand and assess which AI solutions you need to, to be able to deploy them. So if you want to check that out, on, that's on now learning. As always, um, we're going to start uh, just spending a, a few minutes looking at the safe harbor notice. Uh, in those sessions, we tend to only talk about what's available in the product, how it works. Uh, but sometimes if you have a question and we want to answer you and give you a sneak peek of what, what's coming in the future, we might mention something that's not available yet. In that case, please uh, exhaust judgment and uh, don't make a purchasing decision based on that information and always check back with your account team on what's available in the product at the time you purchase it. If you are, if you are new to AI Academy, here are some basics. This is in sessions that we bring for you. So we bring you fresh ideas to give you a better understanding and practical guidance of our AI products. Those sessions are recorded and then we post the link on the YouTube channel that I mentioned previously. Uh, but if you are here with us live today, uh, you can enjoy that content and you can also ask questions. So use the Q&A panel in that Zoom webinar to ask questions and uh, we are here to answer those today. And uh, so that would bring us to the topic of today, which is document intelligence, technical tips and the toolbox for troubleshooting Docintel. As I mentioned, my name is Loic Sanchez and I'm joined today with uh, Saket. Do you want to introduce yourself? 
Hello everyone, my name is Saket Bijmalla. I'm part of AI Solution Success team. We help implementing AI products with early adopters, capture any learnings, and we improve uh, those learnings by improving the product. Thank you. And uh, so some of the content today will be presented by Saket. So just a quick overview of how we want to structure today. I've been talking for a little bit. I'm going to talk for about two more minutes just to give you an overview of what we're going to cover today. But then we're going to spend the rest of the session really in the tool, showing you some of uh, the exacting, exciting things about this product. And we take Q and A's along the, the session. So if you have anything, again, ask in the Q and A panel and we are here to answer you. So today's session is about technical tips and troubleshooting of document intelligence. And there are some questions that sometimes you might have on the document intelligence product. And the, the common ones are, for example, my values are not written in my target record, or my task shows fail to process the task. I don't really know what that means. How am I supposed to troubleshoot that? The task is simply not processing what's happening. How can I troubleshoot that? Uh, I've trained and created my model in my subprod instance. Now I move it to my prod instance. How can I do that? So I can like, migrate my models between instances. Also simply just basically, when is the training happening when I'm using document intelligence? So he, those are the questions that we are going to cover today. Uh, we can cover that in any specific order. So if you have anything that's top of mind, any pressing questions, just again, let us know in the chat and we can take that question right away. Uh, but if not, I'll just go through, through them quickly. And so the first thing I wanna address is, when is the training happening? So really just to give you an overview of the process with Dr. So you, when you are in the recommendation or autofill mode, mode you upload a document to either a record or directly a document task. And that's a trigger to trigger the, the prediction. And that's a process that is synchronous. In that process, values are extracted from your documents and then the values are, and then predictions are made. Then those predictions are shown to the user in that uh, document intelligence workspace. And when the user is selecting the values from the document, it's, it's actually doing validation on this prediction. And that's when you see the different confidence level. Really, that's when uh, the model is being trained. So once the task is, is submitted here, after it's been validated, there is a, a something happening in the background that we don't really see. And that's the training of the AI model. And so that, that's to answer when is the training happening. And the, so that's happening in the background and that's uh, happening kind of like at the same time as your values are actually extracted and then copied back into to the record. So that's training. And when you get to straight through processing, then you see that because we don't do validation anymore, there is no training happening anymore. So when you have a model that is, um, enable for straight through processing, you upload the document and, add it, and it triggers the extraction. Again, still asynchronous, the values are predicted. And if the threshold is met, then the values are extracted directly. So there is no user validation. So the, there is no AI training happening. So this was just to answer, how is the training happening? And then now we're gonna talk more about troubleshooting. And I like to call that the toolbox for troubleshooting uh, because to troubleshoot, we're gonna access some of the, the tables in which that um, the product is built on. And so it's not really always straightforward. So I just wanted to put that on a slide. When you troubleshoot, uh, first you wanna be able to access the, the list of your use cases uh, in the list view. And the reason I'm mentioning that is that if you, are using document intelligence admin, which is a great uh, experience on top of document intelligence. 
to set up your models, that's great, but then you don't uh, might not be a, uh, access to the list of use cases. So to, to, to do that, you just have to type the name of the table, which is the I underscore task underscore definition, and then a dot list to, to access your list. And on that view, what you want to do is to add, there are four columns that you want to add. They are called the ML solution definition for uh, X, Y, and Z. I'll show you that in a second, but you want to add those columns to your view because that's helpful for troubleshooting. And then, the other table that's extremely helpful to troubleshoot is called the ML solutions. And to access that, it's ML underscore solution dot list. And um, when you open a record on that table, uh, there's a related link here that says show training progress. So we'll see that in a second. That's uh, something I wanted to point out. All right, so with that being said, let's uh, go in um, the tool and Look at how we can do that. Uh, so I'm seeing again. I'm showing my uh, task uh, use case here. So a task definition. To get to that view, this is where I type my di task definition dot list, and so that way I can access the use cases on the list view instead of the 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 admin experience view, which again, if you're configuring for the first time, use the admin experience. Uh, but if you are troubleshooting and you're a more advanced user, I, I recommend using that view here. Uh, I'm gonna, sorry. I'm gonna go back to how it looks. Okay, so that's how you, that's what you get when the default list view. And so I recommend that you click on that icon here and on that list of available columns, you want to look at ML solution definitions for, and you have OCR, PDF, prediction, and training. And so you can add that to your view. And the reason you want to do that is because on a case like that one, so you see that uh, migrated use case here, I noticed that I don't have anything in those. And that is most likely the result of a bad migration. And so if I try to process tasks on that use case, nothing is ever going to happen. So I know straight away something is going wrong here. So that's uh, how I can troubleshoot that. Now, if I do have a value and I, I get open my case, sometimes it happens that I process my tasks and then they get back with the error. And most of the time it just says fail to process this task. I don't have much information here. So in order to troubleshoot that, that's when I then go to the ML solution table. And to access that, I'll type ML underscore solution dot list. And I like to add the created column because it's not always there. And then uh, if you have a most likely need to create, yeah, to add a filter on create on today so you don't see everything that's happening. But um, yeah, so something happened here. I tried to process the task. It said configuration or network error. And that's the reason why my document task failed to process. So that gives me additional context to troubleshoot. So I can open that task. And then, as I mentioned, there is that related, links, related link. And that's what I want to look at. And so for that one, I open that. And the error here is that my shared service worker user does not exist or is not active. So what does that mean? Well, if I maybe get to my uh, user list. Actually, I have a favorite here. So uh, let's use that. It's just, uh, I'm on the sys user list and uh, no magic here. And I'm looking for the name of that shared worker user. And I just noticed there is nothing in that table. So here, what happens is that my user is, is this is a user that's uh, in, is being used by the system to, to trigger those workflows and those uh, processing. And it's missing here so that the system, the system doesn't work here. But if I go to a different instance, Switch to a different instance. Oh, 
And in that one, okay, I see I have my, my shared service worker and it's active. So I'm confident that in, in that other instance, something is less more likely to happen to work. So step one, make sure the shared worker, shared service worker user is there. Um, and then, so um, in that other instance now, uh, and I'm again going to back to my list of tasks and I see something's happening. My tasks are also failing in that instance. So I want to troubleshoot that. So uh, I'm going to go to the list of uh, ML solutions again. There's a training request timed out. And that one, I don't even get the link here. So what's happening is that my solution is even um, breaking even before it started. So in that case, I think it has to do with connecting to the infrastructure to do the training. And uh, to troubleshoot that, I'll go to my list of system properties. So I type system properties dot list and I look for the glide dot shared service scheduler dot URL uh, property and look for the value. By the way, this is uh, obviously recorded, but this is also documented in the, the FAQ, okay? So you don't have to memorize everything today, but um, if you wanna go back and do the steps later, you can refer to that document. Uh, right now, I just wanted to show you. So uh, that system property here, uh, I find it and then I look at the value and see I have a problem in here. So something happened that the value got changed and it's missing something or the, the URL was not the right one. So if I save that, I'm just gonna give you the link to the article. There you go. So I updated that value. Let me finally get back to my list of tasks. If I create a new task now. Click on process. And uh, a good way to see if uh, some, if the, now the training is happening properly is to go again to that list of ML solutions and look at what's happening here. And I see that it created a new record just now. And uh, the record state for now is uh, waiting for training. And we'll wait a little bit, but if that doesn't say that the network or the connection or any error, it means the system is ready to process that task. And then uh, I fixed my issue there. There we go. So training request was received and then it's gonna send the data to the infrastructure and do all the training and predictions and everything like that. So it looks like we fixed the issue there. All right, we good there. And then um, the last thing I want to show is uh, when we have an other common issue is that uh, when we uh, process Okay, yeah, I have the example here. So I uh, created a new table in which I'm storing my values and um, I process the task that did the extraction, but when I look at my source record here, see, I'm, I don't get anything, I don't get the value that I'm expecting in the name here. So I wanna troubleshoot that, what's going on. And to do that, I'll go back to my, to my use case or task definition, and I make sure that the integration setup is, is properly done. So I did create an extract integration. It did create a flow. Let me open the flow, actually I opened it because it takes some time to load. So I have some that flow here. I did activate it. I have to make sure it's activated. 
And I also, in the properties, make sure that it's running either as a system user or as a user with uh, enough uh, permission to write on that table. Uh, so that extraction process is uh, set up properly. My task is being extracted. Uh, again, if I look at the extracted values, I see that the value here is populated in the name, but it's not uh, being um, copied over to the source record. And so in that case, I'm, I'm gonna go back to where, how my table was built. And I'm gonna make sure that uh, my table has all the in it. And, and typically here in that case, something like, I don't have access to create and update the table. So this is what I'm gonna save that. And I'll see on that task, if that worked. So click on the showing doc intel. I do my extraction. I submit my task. And I go back to that view. I refresh my list, make sure that the value here is um, extracted. And then I open my task and now the value was copied over. So that's uh, that's much better. This is troubleshoot and it worked now. So as always, uh, here I checked that um, the the extraction the, the integration was set up. I checked that the flow that uh, sparring that is activated and everything works. And then I checked the permission on my table, and this is where the, my issue was, and it's working now. All right, uh, that's it for an overview of the troubleshooting. I'm gonna hand it over to. Saketna is going to show us how to migrate the model between different instances. Right. Thank you, Loic. Let me share my screen here. All right. So traditionally, we are used to move code from one instance to the other using update sets. Uh, in case of Docintel, what happens is even when you create an update set, your flow designer that you create as part of your task definition, your uh, use case and your keys and fields, these all get captured in your update set, but the train model does not. In order to move your train model, what you have to do is you'll have to run certain code in the background script so this is the article where the script is uh, written. So we have to copy up the script. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy the script, go to my background scripts, and paste it over here. So once we paste it, the first line of the script, uh, it asks for a sys ID of the use case. In order to get the sys ID, you can if you're using docintel admin, you can type in document intelligence, click on use cases, open the use case that you want to migrate. Sys ID is usually the last uh, parameter in your URL. So you can copy the parameter from here and paste it over here. If you're not using the tradition, uh, if you're not using the um, doc intel admin, and if you're using the native UI, you can type in di underscore task underscore definition dot list. This will give you the list of use cases. You can also right click on the desired use case and say copy sys ID. That way you can access the sys ID of the use case. Once you get this uh, sys ID of the use case, all you have to do is make sure that you're in the scope of global and run the script. Now, things to be aware uh, of while running the script. Now, this can take up to a couple of minutes or even few minutes, depending on the number of tasks that you have in your use case and depending on the uh, model. And one more thing is this script can only be ran using the background scripts you cannot apply this on a fixed script or a UI action currently due to the scope restrictions. So once the script uh, is completed, you can navigate to system update sets and local update sets. Once you're here, uh, just give me one second.
I'm going to refresh my instance here. So as you can see, we see that there are four new updates that got created and two of them are in global. So these are the parent batch uh, update sets. So you need not worry about the scoped ones. You can look at the parent ones, which has global in them. So let's open the first one, which has uh, just the name of the use case along with the global update set. Once you open, you have the related link to export this as a batch XML. Click on the export update set as a batch XML, which will download the update set file onto your local in, local system. Along with the global update set, you can see that there is one more that says task one to 50. So open on this update set to and click on export update set to batch XML. Once your update sets are downloaded into your instance, you can navigate to your other and other environment. So let, for the demo purpose, I'm going to show you on another instance. I'm going to go my to my retrieved update sets. and follow the traditional way of uh, uploading the update sets. These are the same steps where we go into the related links and import the update set. So I'm going to click on import update set from XML. I'm going to select my update set and say upload. And I'm going to do the same thing over here and say upload. and search for the ones that we have just uploaded. Over here, you can again go to your uh, global update set first. Click on preview update set batch. Once the preview is complete, click on commit update set. And this will complete the first global update set. And then let's go back to the retrieved update sets and commit the one for the task. We will perform the same step. We'll preview the update set. Once the update set is previewed, click on commit update set. Once you have completed loading and committing your update sets, you can now navigate to your document intelligence use cases.
and you should be able to see your purchase order extraction use case, the train model moved. Also keep in mind that there may be few restrictions on your import uh, properties where for the file limits, let's say if your file exceeds uh, 100 MB, you can update that by going into import export under system properties. Scroll down for the import properties under XML format, you can update the value over here up to one GB. That's all I have to show. Thank you, Loic. Back to you. No, thank you very much. Um, yeah, just to re-emphasize that uh, the method that you use to move a Docintel train the model between instances. So that's very helpful if you've processed documents in an instance that is not your, for example, production instance, but you don't want to lose all that training. So you use that to make sure the model that you move over get uh, captured all that train. So very, very helpful. And I uh, just want to also add maybe that uh, if you are using, uh, you know, your tables and, and all the, the additional data or the sys the, the scope app or, or whatever you, you're using to create your workflow, that's a, uh, a step that you should also add to that process here. I don't think the, the script captured your, your custom tables and things like that. So just remember to 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 move that uh, you know the, the usual way with your update sets or or your scoped application. But other than that, I I hope today was helpful for everybody. Uh, thank you for joining and uh, see you uh, for the next session. And again, thank you so much, Saket, for joining us. Thank you, everyone.